US President Joe Biden has wrapped up his tour of the Middle East, telling Arab leaders that the US will not walk away from the region, but fail to secure security and oil commitments. Let's go to our political analyst and professor at Curtin University for our Monday. But at least he had some, we might do some business and you'll see about it within the next couple of weeks or so. <laughs> That's what he said. Hey, morning chat, Joe Syracuse. Good morning. So how would you rate his trip to the Middle East? Uh, good morning, Pete. Well, before I say that, I mean, I think we should note that uh, the president's trip to the Middle East uh, darkly coincided with New York City's uh, uh, public service ad to its people uh, how to survive a nuclear attack. I mean, uh, I guess New York has less confidence in this president than anybody else. Wow. Look, uh, he didn't get much what he wanted. He, uh, with the Israelis, he... Uh, he extended uh, President uh, Trump's policies there. That's the Abraham Accord. He's not going to be moving any embassies or anything like that. He uh, continues to disappoint the Palestinians. Um, he makes he there's lip service to the two-state solution, but there is going to be no two-state solution. In fact, Pete, uh, there's as much chance of that as Texas going back to Mexico. Now, with the, with the but yet there's so many people who support him. Obviously, they're not going to say the opposite, but it would behoove you to speak the truth to people who will listen uh, when you're asked about the president. and um, But they will say that he's doing a good job. They're lying. I don't know why they're lying, but it doesn't help anything by giving people false hopes. When we clearly see him going, he's trying to make up for all of the BS that he's done so far, and he's failing time after time. Man. Yeah. There's as much chance of that as Texas going back to Mexico. Now, with the, with the Saudis, um, he wanted more oil production, and I listened very carefully to some of the Saudi ministers, and they're not going to give him uh, increased oil production at this stage. Uh, they got their own game to play. And, of course, the Saudis are the big winners here because they've now returned to the family of nations. You know, he's given them this credibility they, they haven't had for a couple of years because their leader there... Um, uh, Killed uh, one of the kill Kasoji, and I mean it's incredible how a leader of a nation can kill and chop somebody up in a foreign country. Uh, he uh, he said uh, interestingly in, in, to an American question. Did he say chop someone up in a foreign country? Did I hear that right? He said it's interesting that he can that a leader can chop someone up in a foreign country. That's that's what I heard him say. In, I mean, it's incredible how a leader of a nation can kill and chop somebody up in a foreign country. Oh my. Uh, he uh, he said uh, interestingly I... in, in, to an American question that he could he, that Kasoji wasn't really his his main na main enemy. He said he had a thousand other people he would have preferred to kill first. <laughs> so, wow, like, this is the kind of guy we're dealing wow. with. But look, the president did get didn't get anything. There's no shrewd diplomacy here. Uh, he did go back on the scene. America right. is now mo more so, and more in wow. mired in, in the Middle East. So uh, there won't be, you know, the, the pivot is back to the Middle East, I'm afraid. How much of this was just for PR purposes, Joe? I mean, the, the, just, just for Joe Biden to be seen in the Middle East, and it's his first trip to the Middle East. I want to say all of it was for PR purposes. Uh, make it seem like I'm doing something. Make it seem like we're moving in the right direction. Make it seem like I'm making big moves all across the world. Make it seem like I am um, a, a real president who's who's who, who's capable of making deals. Where well, clearly he's not. Clearly he's not, man. Middle East is president. Um... My point being, how much of this was about him being there to be seen doing something? I'd say about 90% um, was uh, about optics, to be seen, yeah. to be yeah. back. He, he likes to say that, to be back. Uh, I agree. He, um, uh, ironically here, um, he, he left a lot of the woke message out of this. You know, he's always talking about human rights. That's what uh, Jake Sullivan, Sullivan uh, this national security advisor, and Secretary of State Blinken are always talking about. The, um, the trip uh, may have been about optics, but uh, he's further alienated the progressive wing of his party by failing to mention uh, human rights. He's uh, alienated a lot of people in the media for the same reason. But look, he showed up for the uh, photo opportunity. He got that. It didn't look very attractive. And uh... that's uh, an extremely expensive photo shoot. Just saying, especially if it's not helping anything. That's an extremely expensive photo shoot. Which of you are, I wonder how much this photo shoot costs.
because I, I'm, I'm certain it was extremely expensive. Uh, once again, the president um, uh, probably overreached. Uh, and of course, if you don't have leverage, um, what are you doing there? I mean, he promised the Israelis that uh, the Iranians will never acquire nuclear weapons. I, I, I worry a little about these words, never. I mean, how long is the United States going to be involved in that proposition without creating uh, even worse conditions? So, yeah. look, he didn't get what he wanted. and I'd give him probably a D minus for this trip. A D, a D minus. OK, well, wow. I wonder what grade you're giving Kamala Harris at the moment, because I want to ask you about her. So Biden's left her behind. And uh, she was talking about expanding access to transportation last week, and I'm reading a quote here. She says, you need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do the work and get home. It's a quote. <laughs> Is she really an attorney, guys? Come on. She cannot be if she's talking like that. Come on. Listen to what... This is now what he says that she's reading. He's reading it verbatim. Talking about expanding access to transportation last week, and I'm reading a quote here. She says, you need to get to go and need to be able to get where you need to go to do the work and get home. It's a, quite a word salad there. She's done this before. I suppose it prompts my question to you, Joe. How do you think she's doing? Well, look, I, I had um, great hopes for her in the beginning. She looked, uh, she was quite good as a candidate, and uh, she challenged uh, Joe Biden for, you know, New York Minute there. Um, she's received um, uh, unfavorable ratings, or uh, uh, unfavorable ratings as much as 53 percent. People don't like her very much <clears throat> because she hasn't been able to handle the jobs. You know, she's been giving this tough portfolio. She was told to go down to the the border and straighten things out, of course, which is uh, not working out so well. Look, she she uh, she wasn't really up for the job. The job's a lousy one too, Pete. You know, yeah. uh, FDR's yeah. uh, vice president once called the uh, the vice the vice president's job as 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 likable as a pitcher's spit. I mean, she <laughs> she's got a, a really tough job. As likable as a pitcher's spit. <laughs> oh man, you know what I'm gonna do after this? I need to go see if um, if Kamala has done any interviews with people around the um, uh, any communities that that want to just let her sit down and talk and i want to hear what she has to say about what she how she honestly believes she's um if she's done a good job bad job or whatever up to this point i think is important i, I really want to know what she believes and without her lying man i would like you know what never mind because i'm not going to see any interviews of her giving the 100% truth. She won't do that. Not until after this is all over with. And Joe Biden is not going to win again. He's not. And she, and I don't think anyone's going to vote for her separately as her own candidate. I don't think that's going to happen either. Job. And she didn't <laughs> well, do a very good thing. Well, I mean, Greg, very... Sh Greg Sheridan called her the worst v VP since Quail. How do you feel about that comment? Well, look, I think Quail, Quail was done in, you know. He, he was smart. He was smarter than he looked, you know, even though he couldn't smell potato right on a national television in, in a kid's classroom. Look, um, she, she's um, she, she's not a likely successor to him. Uh, he chose her because he personally wanted her for the job. He didn't chose, choose her because she was uh, putting pressure on him. Uh, in, in that campaign. So it was a, a personal choice. And um, I'm afraid. He chose her because she was a woman. He also chose her because she was a black woman. So that's, those were two compartments of votes that they were trying to get. That's it. That's it. He said, look, I got the white males, okay? You'll get the women. And you'll also get the black women. you also get the black people because they're going to vote for somebody black. But black people are already going to vote for Democrats anyway. 92% or something like that. Something, something crazy like that. I'm afraid that uh, Kamala Harris is going to go down with the ship with, the, with her leader because they they're both have approval ratings underwater and they're not going to be very successful next time around. Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much killed off any hope that she might have had to become president, I would have thought as well. Hey, Joe, we're out of time. I'm well... I don't think she has any chance whatsoever being um, becoming president. I don't know anybody that'll vote for her. That's that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> if she ran tomorrow, black people would be right on board. Ooh, let's vote for Not this family. New no Surrey Bob. New. No. My answer is no. I gotta put my foot down. No.
No. Matter of fact, when people in my family vote, I'm gonna be right there looking over their shoulder. Mm, no, pay me no mind. Pay me no mind. I'm just pay me no mind. I'm just making sure that you do what we discussed in the car on the way here. At any rate, I want to hear what y'all guys say about this in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all have been amazing per usual, man. Love y'all.